Hey, it's Matt. I've got a painting of a Wilson snipe this time. These guys are fantastic little birds and uh, fun to see. I got photo reference for this guy at Michigan State University's bird banding lab. So it was in the bander's hands and I could use a macro lens and get a super detailed up close shot of the guy. In my photo, it had kind of a, a gray background, just kind of blurred out greenery from where the banding station was, and that's not what I think of when I think of a snipe. So I ended up doing kind of a uh, suggested background of a, kind of a pink to gray wash, which I thought would go really well with, uh, with the bird and not give a heck of a lot of indication of uh, its environment to go by. So once I had the basic wash down, I sucked off some of the extra color with uh, some TP. Otherwise, it has a tendency to kind of puddle at the edges of the, uh, of the painting. And once that was done, I hit that with the hairdryer to lock it in. As I looked at it, I thought, you know, there are a couple of areas where it was a little darker than I wanted, and it just was a little paler than I wanted. Um, which has a tendency with watercolor washes that are wet on wet that they have a tendency to get light. So I went about putting in a second wash so I could intensify and even those colors out. And in this case, I didn't pre-wet the page. I just used my pre-mixed colors and went across um, with that same gradient of colors that I had. areas where there's some uh, little dust so I sucked that stuff off so keep it even and again hit it with the hair dryer getting closer And I looked at it and thought, you yeah, know, there may be a couple of other areas where I could smooth this out. So I just hit it with a layer of water. And so I was just moving the paint around that was already on there. Kind of, that ends up lightening it a little bit, but it also is going to end up evening out those tones. So I kept it at a sharp angle so it would puddle toward the bottom. And then sucked off any of the extra um, pigment down toward the bottom of the beak and the edge of the page. So I ended up with a nice soft background. And that's a set of colors that's going to go really nice against all those tans of the bird. And so I locked those in with the hair dryer. And once that was good and done, I ended up peeling off the frisket. So I end up peeling kind of from the clean area of the page off to the edge. That keeps your paper really nice and neat. And that revealed the white of the paper, and then I transferred the sketch. I didn't show you the transfer of the sketch. I just did that with some tracing paper. And then I went about washing in the lightest kind of tans of the bird and uh, building those in. You can see all the green of my uh, photograph above. My printer was also acting up, so the, the, the print was a pretty bad uh, reference to go by. It had detail, but the, uh, the colors were awful. So uh, I didn't rely a whole lot on, the, uh, on my photo reference for anything other than location of the actual feathers and, and things. I did the color based on memory. What cute little birds these things are. Holy smokes, they got that great big eye and oh, that crazy long bill. It definitely looks like a Dr. Seuss creation, but who, who couldn't love these things? They're just so crazy. And strangely, at the banding station, they almost never have... I think this was the first and only time they had had a snipe. They get woodcock there all the time. But a snipe is not what you think of when you think of that uh, kind of wooded area that the banding station's in, so it was a real surprise that they got this. 
and we happened to be there that day. Um, so we got great photos of this, which we would have missed if we weren't there. One of the things that did have to had to change as I did this was that you know I introduced this kind of pinky gray background and in my photo reference I had all the green so as I did this I had to kind of keep in mind okay well what's this pink gray environment going to do to the feather color and what's that going to do to the reflection on the eye so some of those things you have to balance for when you change those backgrounds to have it read logically and kind of make the viewer make sense for the viewer so it, it it seems to fit in that environment and it doesn't look like you just cut it out and stuck it on a different uh, different background and i tried to keep this one i won't say loose because there's a lot of feathering um that's going on in there but i kind of scumbled the feathers in i didn't spend a lot of time trying to render every last you know tiny little feather you know bracked and you know every every last detail i kind of suggested a lot more than i actually painted so it was uh it went a little bit faster for that uh, and i think it looked a little bit better for that And it looks like I used some black on here. What you know, as as I work through the painting, I never really use black other than you know maybe uh, I'll mix alizarin crimson and green to get a, a black, and I may use it on the pupil. Um, but other than that, I, I try to avoid using blacks because they're just kind of a deadly color, boring, and don't have much character. So for some of the darks on this, I used a mix of uh, ultramarine blue and some burnt umber and that gets you a really dark um, color that has a lot of richness and character to it and you can add a little purple and push it in one direction or you can add some burnt sienna and push it in another direction it just has a lot of a lot of great personality that the black's never going to get you There goes in some of those blackety brown colors that I was just describing. And I think when you see the side by side here, you can actually also see how much you know greener the entire bird and you know the print and the the scene was just with that you know environment and that once we switch it to that kind of pink gray background that uh, you've got to balance a lot of the bird colors for that to read correctly I mean it it has the same basic patterns but your kind of your whole color palette shifts a little bit when you do that It was funny when they they after banding this bird, they released it and they just kind of put it on the ground and it just kind of walked away through the woods. It was just kind of it looked uh, it looked a little befuddled about the whole experience. Like what what just happened to me? And it's funny to see the uh, birds at the banding station because some fly off and you never see them, but there are other ones that you see they they fly off to a branch and then they kind of peck at the band that's just been put at their their ankle there and they they're like what the heck is that thing and they look a little confused and as if they were abducted by aliens and then they fly off a minute later like nothing had ever happened they uh they seem to forget it pretty quickly and they forget it quickly enough that some of them fly right back into the net the same day or the next day so you know it, it, it probably isn't that traumatic to the to the birds
So there you go. That's a transparent painting of a Wilson snipe. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you get a chance, have a peek at the blog or leave a comment.